when I got the tattoo, One Life, No Regrets, on my back in 2021, I knew that I couldn't run from the dream, from those dreams anymore, because I do believe that life is always talking and that God is always preparing you for what's to come. If you're honest and if you accept it. You're listening to the Redefining Wealth Podcast with Patrice Washington. And this is the space that you come back to over and over again to hear all about what it means to chase purpose, not money. And I am so excited to welcome you to season seven. I know that you've missed me. I have missed you too. I've gotten the DMs. We've received the emails like, excuse me, when are you coming back? (laughs) We're here and I'm so excited to kick off this season for the next 16 weeks. We are going to have such a phenomenal time as we continue to dig into the six pillars of wealth. You know what that means. If you don't know what that means, here's what you just stepped into. This is a community that believes that wealth is so much more than just money and material possessions. We believe in the original 12th century definition of wealth, which says it's about the condition of well-being. And so each and every week, I invite you here to unpack what I call the six pillars of wealth. It's fit, It's people, it's space, it's faith, it's work, and then it's money. And you're going to learn more about that. But if you want to grab the cheat sheet, head over to patricewashington.com forward slash the number six pillars, and you can grab the cheat sheet and you'll get the full breakdown on what that's all about. Now, to kick off this brand new season, we're talking about my theme for the year. It is dream a new dream, and I can't wait to really dive in. But before I do, let's get to the affirmation of the week. You know, you gotta speak positivity into your life, into your day. You gotta affirm positivity. You gotta affirm abundance. You gotta affirm yourself to well. This week's affirmation is, I allow myself to dream a new dream. I understand that oftentimes my dreams are for a reason and a season. I embrace when a season is up and move forward with the lessons and blessings uncovered during that time because they've made me who I am and are equipping me for who I am becoming. It is okay to leave behind a dream that no longer feels in alignment with my soul's assignment. It is okay to detach from what no longer serves the highest and best use of my light. God is infinite and the universe is abundant and there are many ways outside of what I currently know that can allow me to accomplish what I've been called to do on this earth. And I'm willing to find that endless potential by taking one step at a time. I allow myself to dream a new dream. So if you remember the last episode from season six, I was breaking down the case for contentment. So my prayer in 2021 was, Lord, allow me to be content with contentment. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I'm telling you it is worth it. You are going to want to go back and get that one in your spirit as well. But one of the things that I was saying about contentment is that I don't have a struggle with making the choice. Sometimes I have a struggle with accepting the choice that I made. Anybody else? Okay. My prayer around contentment was was really just, God, let me have peace with the choice that I have made. And as many of you know, I turned 40 last year and actually, In about a week or two here, I'll be turning 41. And that really led me in to such a season of self-reflection. Oh my goodness. Even that birthday episode, that's another great one to go back to where I talked about, I wanted to detach myself from certain labels, right? And even numbers and just things that no longer supported me. And I don't know about you. Um, I realize that sometimes when you ask yourself the tough questions, 
you have to be prepared for the tough answers that come. Woo. And I learned a lot of tough, like tough things about myself. I think I'm even kind of choking up just knowing what I'm going to share because just recently uh, on Instagram, I did a live and it was about your life is always speaking to you. And I was talking about how life brings so many signs that we like to ignore because it doesn't fit the label or the attachments that we have to who we think we should be or what we think people expect of us or how we think our life should look or the journey should go. And then when something happens, I call it the boulder effect, right? Life is speaking to you. Maybe you get a little word or a hunch or you feel this, this nudge, something in your belly. Maybe you have a dream or a vision, which often happens to me. And you ignore it because many of us are disobedient, right? And that's the pebble. And then something else happens and it's the stone. And then before you know it, the boulder comes. And when the boulder comes, what many of us do is act like it's the first time we've ever seen, heard, felt, experienced it. And we love to go about and share the story as if, oh my gosh, this was so unexpected. I can't believe that this is happening. But if we are honest, if we're honest, we knew all along. We felt it all along. The writing was on the wall. But many times we don't have the courage to look things straight on and accept when a season is up. And I promised myself around my birthday last year that I would acknowledge that I get one life and I will not live with regrets. As a matter of fact, last year I got it tattooed on my back. One life, no regrets. And that tattoo is a constant reminder about being honest and being content with the decisions and the choices that I make. And so my theme for this year is dream a new dream. Because for the last few years, I was having recurring dreams and I knew exactly what they meant, but I was too afraid to act on them. I was too afraid to acknowledge them head on. I was too afraid to share them with anyone. I was too afraid to talk about them personally or publicly like this. But once my birthday hit last year and I started to keep asking myself the tough questions, I was making radical shifts in my health. I started to make radical shifts in the way I run my business. I was making radical shifts in my calendar. And there was a shift that I knew based on how my life had been talking to me, I needed to make. And I kept putting it to the bottom of the list putting it to the bottom of the list, putting it to the bottom of the list until finally I had highlighted and checked off and crossed off everything else. And then I had to get real. And I had to acknowledge the dreams, the visions, the nudges, what was coming to me in my prayer room, not just for myself, but for everyone around me. And so for this first episode of the season, I want to share something very personal with you because I don't believe in waiting until you are at the top of the mountain to share the valley. I love Mike Todd of Transformation Church. He did a sermon once and he talked about in the middle and he was talking about how when we think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, he died on Friday and rose on Sunday, but no one ever talks about Saturday. And one of the things that I have learned just in my life, but as I've been a leader and a coach and I believe an influencer to many women out there is that it doesn't serve people to just tell them on Sunday morning 
right? Like, oh, I, something happened on Friday, but on Sunday I was good. It's like, no, let me share with you Saturday and the hell that I was going through on Saturday and the tough times and the rough times that I was going through on Saturday. And so at the time of this recording, this is Saturday. This is Saturday. And I don't know when Sunday is coming. I look forward to Sunday, but I want to use this season of the podcast to continue to share amazing insights and interviews, but really to share my heart as I feel led throughout this time on the podcast and in social, in my work, from the stage, wherever I feel led, because that's just who I am. And so dreaming a new dream for me and not policing the dreams that I had had for probably 18 months has led me to separate from my husband. And at the time of this recording, I will have officially filed for divorce. And it's hard because it does not look like the dream that I had for my family on December 29th, 2007, when I said I do. It doesn't look like what I expected from my daughter. It doesn't look like what I expected for myself, right? There were so many dreams that I had for what we would do when Reagan graduated from high school and what we would do when Reagan went off to college and what we would do, you know, when Reagan finally got married or she had her first child and all those things. And I think that's the thing. It's all of the expectation um, that we build because of the dreams that we have. But again, in all honesty, I have been having dreams for almost two years that those days were not coming and I just wasn't ready to face it. And when I got the tattoo, One Life No Regrets, on my back in 2021, I knew that I couldn't run from the dream, from those dreams anymore, because I do believe that life is always talking and that God is always preparing you for what's to come. If you're honest and if you accept it. And this has played out in my life over and over again. Uh, many of you know that before Reagan, I had a son, his name was Sir, July 29th, 2006. And several weeks before Sir was born, I would have a recurring dream that I would be out and about at a mall or in the park or at the beach with this little girl playing and the little girl looked just like my husband. And people would say to me over and over again in every dream, oh my gosh, just call her Geraldine, which when Reagan was born, we did. They would say, just call her Geraldine. Oh my goodness, this little girl looks just like her father, but I already knew I was having a boy. So when I would wake up, I would say to myself, how come I never have a little boy in the dream? Like, where's my son? And I would think that all the time. And then in July of 2006, I went into preterm labor and my son was born severely premature and I held him until he took his last breath. And I'll never forget the day, I'll never forget the moment that I thought he had passed already and my mom was in the hospital room and I was like, did he die? And right after I said it, he, and he grabbed my finger and I saw the life leave his body. And that was 16 years ago. And I will never forget the moment he grabbed my finger and I will never forget or stop acknowledging the lessons and the blessings that came from those hours that I spent with him and from that time. But in the weeks that would come, as I would share with people what happened, I found myself consoling them 
I found myself literally, I had sent out an email and the subject was my baby is gone to heaven. And it was paragraphs long, but I just talked about the experience and what happened and what I learned and how I was trusting God in spite of. And I found myself consoling everyone else. But a part of why I was able to do that is because my spirit had already been prepared. I didn't understand what the dreams meant and I didn't want to believe that they were saying something else, but I knew it in my spirit. I, I really believe I felt it deep down in my spirit. And even though I went to grief counseling and I did all those things to heal, I believe that life is always sending signs. I don't know how it comes to you, but for me, it comes through dreams and visions. And every time I have ignored a dream or a vision, sometimes I ignore it possibly because I just don't understand. Now I work really hard to record my dreams and visions so that I can gain understanding and pray over them and look for confirmation around them. But other times I just don't want to see it. There are times that I have seen things beforehand and I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> I would turn my head and look the other way and do all the things. And I'm sharing this because I want you to know that if you've had this experience, you're not alone. And I, I would love for you to share with me and let me know that I'm not alone. But life is always speaking to us. And I knew that my son was going to pass deep down in my belly, which is why I was able to handle it, I believe, with a, a grace and a peace that really did transcend all understanding. And I share that because in the same way, the dreams and visions that I've had over the last year and a half are very real. And I had to finally just be honest about them and accept whatever came on the other side of being honest and accept that in me honoring what I have felt and not policing my dreams anymore against what I thought the expectations were of others or because these dreams didn't match the dreams that I had for myself, right? The, the planned things, your goals, your expectations. Sometimes life is talking to you and your plan and life's plan is, is just not the same. And in the last six months that I have been separated and now officially filed for divorce, as people have learned, the first thing that people say is, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And just like when my son passed in 2006, I honestly can sit here with this microphone and say, I believe my spirit was being prepared all along. And so what might feel like a shock for others doesn't necessarily feel that way for me. The entire year last year, God worked with me on contentment. When my prayer was, God, allow me to be content with my contentment, that was building something in me to prepare me for this moment. And we don't always know why we are being called to focus on certain things or certain themes in our life, certain words that guide us throughout the year. When I started the year 2021 with this idea of being content with contentment, I had no idea that it would lead me here. But I'm grateful that that is the work that God did in my life to show me that my challenge with contentment was not so much about my present, there was a lot of things I was discontent with in my past. And there were things that I thought I needed to forgive myself for. 
And the truth is my younger self did the best she could at that time, just like my soon to be 41 year old self is doing the best she can at this time in her life. And I'm learning to not weaponize new wisdom against former versions of myself, because at any given moment, we're just doing the best that we can. When I started podcasting, I had nothing, no fancy equipment, no cover art, no theme music. I just had this burning desire that I was supposed to use my purpose of helping people redefine wealth in the podcasting space. And so with some intentional planning, I launched what became the Redefining Wealth podcast in just three weeks. That was four years ago. And today the Redefining Wealth podcast has over 9 million downloads. We've interviewed everyone from celebrities to entertainers to authors and thought leaders. We've been featured everywhere from Success Magazine to Cosmopolitan and even Good Morning America. Now, why do I share all that? Because I'm not special. The truth is this started with leaning into my purpose and being willing to use my voice in a powerful way. And I bet that there's something that's calling you as well, something that you need to use your voice to amplify in the marketplace. So I wanna help you do that. If you're finally ready to use your voice and launch a podcast that aligns with your purpose, I wanna invite you to check out my intentional online training, Podcast with Purpose. You can find out more details at podcastwithpatrice.com. That's podcastwithpatrice.com. Your purpose deserves to be amplified and I wanna help you do that. So when the theme Dream a New Dream was bubbling up in me, for me, it had two different meanings. One, be honest about your dreams or you're gonna keep having them. And you're gonna keep reliving this hell that you go through in these dreams until you change something. That's number one. And number two, dream a new dream means explore the fullness of what is available to you. It is so easy to start to live your life on automatic. If you're like me, you've been driving the same type of car for a decade or two. You might, you might get the new version, but you go back to the same car. You live in the same type of house. All the stuff is like very similar and you don't even realize how automated you have become for all of the life and world experience that I've had, so much of my life has been on autopilot, not allowing myself to really do much outside of my comfort zone in many ways. And so I felt like I was being stretched to dream a new dream, to see new possibilities. Just recently, I went to Costa Rica and I'll be going back again here soon, but I went to Costa Rica with a mastermind group. And as soon as we got to this waterfall area and it was a waterfall in this river and all this stuff, I had a bathing suit on under my little dress, but I saw it and baby, the black, the black little girl in me from South Central Los Angeles said, I am clearly gonna be the photographer cause ain't no way I'm getting in that water. <laughs> with these people and I was prepared to literally sit on the sidelines Bef before I got out of the van I was prepared to sit on the sidelines because I was like black people don't do that this is how you end up on vacation with your non-black friends and you don't go home we don't do stuff like this I'm just keeping it real okay and I got to the waterfall and I'm watching everyone get in and splash around and have this experience. And a part of me was like, one life, no regrets. How often will you be at a waterfall in Costa Rica? One life, no regrets. And one of, one of the women, my new friend, Leanne from Belgium, came and extended her hand and walked me stone by stone over to the waterfall so I could have that experience and not regret, not regret, not, you know, not taking advantage of that. 
And after I got out of the whole waterfall and had that moment and everyone cheered and it was so awesome. Another one of my new friends, Dr. Romy mentioned to me, she's like, wasn't that beautiful how Leanne took your hand and she was the bridge. Now here's what she didn't know. Months ago, I had a dream that I was at a river and there was a waterfall downstream. And I kept crouching at the edge of the river like I was waiting. And it was this sense that I was like waiting on God. That was just waiting. And I kept getting up looking and I'm like, okay, I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to get across this river. This makes no sense. Lord knows I'm not gonna try to swim. My swimming game ain't that strong. I'm not gonna try to swim through this river. What's going on here? And one of my clients, Lauren, sent me an email and she had a dream about me and the dreams connected perfectly and in her dream a bridge was being built for me to get on the other side of the river so when dr romy said leanne extended her hand and she was like a bridge all of these pieces came together and I felt like it was such confirmation for my soul that my dreams are valid. It was confirmation that this is how God speaks to me. And the thing that I remembered the most from the dream of the river that was that while it was raging, I never got swept up. I was patient. I waited on God and he sent the right people to help get me over. And I say that to you today because I recognize that this season of my life is just all about dreaming a new dream. Me taking action to dissolve my marriage for me is an act of obedience because if I didn't do it, I think I would just be going in circles. I would just continue to go in circles, denying and hiding and dismissing what I knew I felt in my spirit. And dreaming a new dream is, I believe, <laughs> going to open up so much space for God to speak to me about what's next, but the next tattoo that I got was give God something to bless. Like we see things, we hear things, we feel things, and we just don't act. And sometimes God is just waiting on us in order to reveal the next step. And I believe that as these months and years go by, that the Lord will continue to speak to me through my dreams. And you better believe he not going to have to talk to me for a year and a half, two years, three years. Mm-mm. My word before last year, my theme before last, before last year's uh, contentment was obedience. And I see how all these years are coming together, how God is teaching me one thing at a time, and it's all coming together for my good. So in this next iteration of my life, I will no longer police my dreams. I will trust and believe that this is the way the divine speaks to my soul. And I will continue to allow my dreams to speak to me and guide me as need be. And I want to live my life in a way so that I'm not on automatic. So the type of car that I've been driving for the last, I don't know, 15 years, I'm just going to do something different. And the places I would normally go for vacation, I'm just going to do something different. And maybe the ways that I've normally wore my hair, I'm just going to do something different. So I'm preparing you because I'm in a season of dreaming a new dream. And I want to see what my life could look like if I just wasn't on automatic and comfortable and going with the flow and doing what I thought people expected of me. Yeah. So I have no clue 
what uh, the next chapter of my life looks like. But as I said at the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic began, and as I said on my birthday last year, I don't know what this decade holds, but I know who holds me. I don't know what this decade holds. I don't know what this journey holds, what this path has for me, but I know who holds me. And because of that, I do have an unprecedented amount of peace and contentment in this moment. And I also have such gratitude, such gratitude for my journey, for my experience, for my marriage, for my friendship with my husband, for my family, for all of it. Because be clear, with no Gerald Washington, there's absolutely no Patrice Washington. And for every good, bad, wonderful, ugly, trial, triumph, for everything that I have experienced, I am grateful because the lessons and the wisdom and the nuggets and everything that I do my best to share on this podcast and in my coaching programs and from the stage and in media, all of it, all of it, I have learned for the most part during this relationship. Gerald and I were best friends before we started dating. And so if you count it all up, it's about 20 years, half my life. And so all of this, I have to acknowledge, I just wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be Reagan's mother. I wouldn't have been America's money maven. I wouldn't be the founder of Redefining Wealth. I wouldn't have been any of this. And so I have no regrets. Still one life, no regrets. I know that everything that has happened is divine. And I know that even in this, which is a more difficult season for myself, for my husband, for my daughter, for our family, I know that there is purpose in it. And I know that none of this is happening to us, it's happening for us. And I am grateful that we have chosen to uncouple with grace and dignity. And I'm grateful that my daughter gets to see us work this out with peace. And I am grateful for the lessons that I will learn in this Saturday. And I promise you that while I'm in this Saturday, even if I don't feel led to talk about it, I am still journaling. You know, I'm a journaling machine and I'm still recording things here and there because I know that this experience is not just for me. I know that everything that I've been through, when I come out on the other side, I realize that I was always blessed to be a blessing. And I believe that this experience is gonna be a blessing as well. And I'm ready for new dreams. I'm ready for new dreams. And I can't wait to share the journey with you all. And you have to understand this is so special to me and it's so important to me because I realize how divinely connected this community is. We have over 500 graduates from either Purpose to Platform or Command the Stage. Literally in the last three, four months, I said nothing to no one. I had two friends that I was confiding in and my mama and my brother, four people who knew about what was going on. And one by one, women from this community have reached out to me and said, I don't know, but the Lord just keeps putting you on my heart. Anita, Latoya, Navasha, like Amy, so, like so many of you had no idea what was going on. And yet you would send me prayers and send me scriptures and voice memos and send me DMs and say, I've been praying for you every morning. And that is also how life speaks to me. God will send people 
to just confirm that I am seen and I'm covered and I am loved. And I just want you guys to know that that is exactly why, that is precisely why I feel like I have a responsibility to share, right? To share and to not sugarcoat. So it's time to dream a new dream. That's what we're doing this season. And you may already know one of my um, things is that I'm really into the fit pillar, right? So through therapy and my life coach getting mentally fit, but then also physically fit, I hired a nutritionist and a trainer in this season. And so we are talking a lot about the fit pillar and the people pillar on this season of the podcast. And there is so much for you to learn and so much to look forward to. And I truly hope that you are blessed by this entire season. I kind of feel like Mary J. You know, when people say, oh, when Mary J is going through a little situation, honey, we're going to get the best music. I kind of feel like that about the podcast. I'm in a situation and therefore I think this is going to be one of the best seasons of the Redefining Wealth podcast. So we shall see. I'm so excited. Uh, to have you on this journey with me. Um, and I just want you to know that like, I'm good. I'm good. But if you feel led to pray for my family, for all three of us, we receive it. I receive it. Um, now don't be praying uh, something I didn't ask you to pray though. <laughs> okay, I just, I just want to be clear. We are moving in the right direction for us. So just pray that everyone has peace and that we all, you know, will experience a peace and a joy that transcends all understanding. Okay. Just be in agreement with me on that prayer. But thank you guys for being a part of this community. I truly hope that this season of the Redefining Wealth podcast is a blessing to you. And I do plan, as my girl Brooke Thomas says, to live out loud. And so I will be sharing what I'm working on, what I'm thinking about, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I know that we're so connected. And I know that you might be in a valley moment or be having some type of transition as well. And so if you have resources or things that are a blessing to you, please share, because I'm gonna use this microphone and the stage and social media and every platform I can to share how I am moving and navigating through this season as well. So join me, join me as I dream a new dream for what it means to be the Patrice Washington. Thank you guys so much. I'll be back next week with um, amazing interview with the one and only Anthony Trucks. It is so good. You have to be here for that. Um, so come on back. And until then, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.